Hey everyone, welcome back. It's Dr. Frank Wen from Integrity Chiropractic. In today's video, I'm going to review the Lightning Packs Hover Glide Backpack. So I first uh, saw this backpack a couple years ago when I was watching the Quantum Tech HD channel on YouTube. I really like this channel because it shows a lot of cool new te uh, gadgets and, and technology. And so uh, I decided to check in and see what this company is up to right now uh, because a lot of us have been spending more time uh, outdoors because of COVID. And so it turns out the company is in their second or third round of fundraising in their uh, Indiegogo uh, or Kickstarter. And so I decided to uh, go ahead and uh, purchase one of their smaller packs, uh, which is currently shipping. And it comes in three flavors. So I brought one of them in. Uh, I'm gonna give you a detailed review on it and kind of what my thoughts are of it. Uh, and so I think this is a potentially you know, good help for a lot of my patients, especially you know, those of us who live in the Pacific Northwest. We like to go out and you know, hike a lot. Uh, or camp a lot, so this could be you know, a really big help for us, especially if you might have knee pain or back pain, uh, or if you just want to move a little bit more efficiently. So, uh, as usual, I'm super detailed with my reviews, uh, but I've timestamped everything below for you, so if you want to just click around and watch what's relevant for you, please do so. Otherwise, we're going to go ahead and get started. So before I unbox my Hyperglide, I want to talk about the models briefly. These images are from Hyperglide's website. Of the three smaller models, I chose the Tactical because I like its look and it has the most durable fabric with 1000 denier Cordura fabric. The other two are using 300 and 200 denier. The molly weaving on the outer pouch of the Tactical gives it its militaristic character and expands its carrying capacity. Aside from that, the Hiker and the Tactical are pretty similar. They both have a 30 liter capacity and externally it looks like they have the same number of pockets except the Hiker has what looks like a secondary pocket concealed for security. As far as the inside of the pockets and compartments goes, I'll only be able to show you the inside of the Tactical as they don't have pictures of the inside on their website. The commuter appears to be a little more fashionable for moving around the city. It appears to have sacrificed that secondary pocket for a larger main compartment. It also doesn't have a padded hip belt like its larger siblings. The bags are all said to be able to handle some light rain. The three packs share the same 20 inch frame, so you're able to purchase additional bags and swap them, which is kinda cool. The weight capacity of all the bags in gliding mode is 25 pounds, although you can carry more if the bag is locked. I would have loved to test out the 55 liter Trekker, but it won't be available until 2021, and I didn't want to wait until then to see what it's like to move around this backpack. Now I'm going to unbox my tactical pack and introduce you to it. I had to redub this section to streamline my tour for you. The first thing we see upon opening the box is the instruction guide, which has a link to a video tutorial. Be sure to check that out. The next thing is the operations card that you want to read slowly in detail, even though I'll cover everything that the card talks about in the video. They also have a link to an instruction video which you can check out. They also have a quick start guide that shows you how to lock and unlock the pack and set the suspension tension, and as a reminder um, to remove the interference bracket if you need to disassemble the frame, and of course a sticker. So right off the bat, the quality looks really good and the bag looks great. I'm no textiles expert, but I tend to be a stickler for looking at things like stitching quality and zippers as I've had a few bad experiences in the past. I won't look at every little detail with you on video, but it's something I like to take a look at. So one by one, I'll go over each of the compartments and take a look at some of the features. The first thing you see here is the external pouch that has the molly weaving on it, which defines the look of this tactical pack. Some of you know about these already, but I'll put up a link to a cool video I saw if you want to learn more about these uh, modular attachment units. So this pouch has a buckle that fastens it to the main body to be secured. I'm unbuckling it here to reveal how big this pouch is. It has a hole at the bottom of it, so this is obviously not for holding small or loose items. I'll now open the small stash pocket that's small and is just big enough to fit my hand. It has a soft cotton fleece feeling liner. This will be great for small items that won't tear up the liner. Now I'm opening up the secondary pocket. It's medium sized and looks like where you can organize some small notebooks, papers, or pens, or small electronics, and maybe some snacks. It has two shallow pockets, a medium sized one with more depth, an elastic pocket, nylon pocket, and another medium sized uh, pocket above the first one. There's an additional zipper uh, to reveal a fairly large uh, pocket behind all the other ones. It looks like you could place a tablet, keys, uh, wallet, or additional notebooks here. Now I'm opening the main compartment, and this bag is definitely pockets galore. On the back side of the secondary pocket, we find another large pocket with a nylon mesh liner. There's a couple of buckles, much like the ones you see in the travel luggage, where you could probably secure some folded clothes or other flat items. Undoing those buckles gives you access to the Velcro strap that closes the water pouch sleeve. Hidden on each side of the bag are two ports for you to snake your drinking tube through. 
I like these water resistant zippers as well. They're nice. So here you have your chest torso harness, and this can be adjusted up and down by the clips they're attached to. The same clip also serves to lock your water tube. There's a bungee cord sticking out of it, as this is the free end of the suspension system. I'll show you how to deal with this later. And here's the hip pads, which are also detachable from the bag. So turning sideways, here you can see the suspension frame assembly. Inside there are several pulleys that make up the track system that you can see when we turn to look above. One half of the frame is strapped to your back, while the other half is decoupled from your body by the suspension system, which allows it to move 180 degrees off base from your gait, as every time you move, there's a small up and down motion in uh, the body that occurs with each step. So by decoupling the main load from our body, the idea is we won't need to accelerate this extra weight uh, upward uh, with each step, and we won't need to absorb it as much uh, when we come back down on the other foot. Um, this is supposed to translate to less peak forces, which are generally experienced in the lower extremity, and it tends to be associated with uh, injury risk. Okay, so I took a look at the pack instructions uh, in detail uh, off camera, and so I'm going to show you basically how we uh, unlock this backpack because uh, it's not uh, totally apparent uh, right off the bat. So by default, it's in its locked position, and this little swivel arm here that you see uh, pretty much goes right into that little little hole there uh, to lock uh, the track system. But this is the this is the safety. The actual lock uh, is this mechanism right here. And if you see here, there's a couple little holes that it, it looks like it could go into. So uh, basically to fully un unlatch this, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna push down uh, with the pack uh, really hard there. And you can see that it just popped out of place and then basically boom, out it comes. And then this, uh, I should be able to just push back right here and so now uh, now it's out of the way and the backpack is completely unlocked okay so the other important thing about this thing that we want to know and this comes into play once you actually have the weight uh, on your backpack so right here this here is the tension uh, adjustment for the spring system of the backpack and it depends on the amount of load that you have uh, and so I want to show you just where it is but you know we will test it out once I get some uh, load on this backpack here but I just wanted to show you it's right here in this spot okay so now that I showed you the kind of lock mechanism here and how it works uh, what I want to do is actually show you the internals of this uh, sliding frame and suspension system. Uh, and so to do that, uh, what we're going to do is uh, actually remove uh, the pack uh, from the frame. And so uh, for the three smaller designs, they actually share the same frame. And so uh, you can actually purchase the other bags. And so they're all swappable. Um, and essentially, uh, they're fixed to this frame uh, through these little holes uh, with the straps on the backpack. Uh, so this one, this one's your typical strap they loop through and, and lock right here. Uh, there's a couple of Velcro uh, um, straps up in this part here that I'm not going to take that off uh, yet. I just need to get things out of the way. Uh, I think it's important for you to kind of see how this frame works uh, so you can see its elegant design and also kind of know that you're not going to break it, um, you know, moving it around a certain way. Um, and so basically uh, to take this sliding uh, frame uh, off off the base base there. Uh, what we need to do first is we need to remove this little stop right here that you see. And what this is going to do is let me uh, slide up and over and then pull this whole thing off. Uh, and basically with that there, it's, it's interference. So there's a little, little screw there that kind of holds it in place, if you can see there. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, loosen that up. Okay. And you don't have to take it off completely. It's just basically using pressure to uh, mount this little clamp device down. And so uh, I already took it off earlier. It's, it takes a little bit, of, a little bit of force to do it. So I'm just going to use my scissors here to help me push it out. And it's a pretty solid piece of metal there, so you don't have to worry about breaking it. And so, yep, once you pop it, boom, out it comes. And so here it is. Okay, so this next part 
you know, it might seem like you're going to break break this backpack, but you won't. Uh, it's actually it's it's a very rugged design, um, and so what we're going to do here uh, to first take it off, we we need to unlock it. Uh, so first, we're going to pull the safety back, uh, and then I'm going to basically secure with this hand. I'm going to pull down, and that freed the lock. And then what I'm going to do is push that lock out of the way, and then I'm going to let this go up to its natural position there. And so basically what we're going to do now is I need to slide this thing down this way and get the top over the end here and the thing will just pop right off. Okay, right before I pull it off, I want to show you what I'm trying to do. This is basically uh, the rail and the, those are the little wheels that it rides on right there. I don't know if you can see from the camera, but what I need to do is get all this uh, off this end here. So you have to use a little bit of muscle to fight through the bungee cord, but you know, bungee is really resilient, so you're not gonna break it. So uh, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna try to do this here. If I knock the camera off, we'll just reset. Okay, so it helps to hold from this end. And then I push off there and then boom. You make sure you're holding it securely because it just came off. And then there you go. And then, yep, the bungee will recoil. So just be careful. Make sure you're holding it on securely. You don't want to smack yourself uh, in the face or, you know, something around you. And so here you have it. So now you can see the internals uh, of the system. Uh, it's, a, it's a really elegant design. And so basically what it is is it's a combination of uh, pulleys and a bungee cord uh, that help uh, basically suspend and uh, offset uh, the phase of how this moves uh, with your gate. Uh, and so... I think it's important for you to see this. Uh, they say sometimes you might have to take it apart if uh, something uh, gets caught in there. Um, I can't think of uh, what would possibly get caught in there at the moment, but uh, I guess the more I use it, the, the more I'll find out. Uh, and so there you have it. Uh, you can see it. So the way they've, they've, they've made it, uh, I think it's nice. Uh, if you ever need to replace a broken part, uh, it looks pretty simple. Uh, you know, they'll probably be able to provide, you know, simple, simple replacement parts that, you know, all you need is a little Allen wrench to loosen things up and, you know, swap, swap things out. Uh, you know, the bungee should last uh, quite a long time, but, you know, if it ever wears out or whatnot, uh, this looks like it's pretty easy to uh, replace uh, as well, too. So, uh, you know, definitely, definitely a, a simple but, you know, well-made design that's not too uh, hard to to service if needed to and so what i'm going to do is i'm going to put this back uh, together too as well i think it's good that i did this so that way you know you don't feel intimidated if you ever have to do this and so what we're going to do is snake this around like so and so putting it on is actually putting it back on is actually a little bit harder than taking it off was because what happens here is on this upper pulley i need to pull the bungee cord so I get enough length so I can sneak around the top here and then force this thing uh, back up that way and then I have to get it back on the tracks so it takes a little bit, bit of muscle to do that so there we go I'm gonna pull around and again I'm gonna try to do this as best as I can without knocking anything over okay and then, so easy to get around that first loop and then you're gonna come around and then basically we're gonna push, I'm using my body here to basically push together. So now I'm holding it with my hand. And you see I'm really, really fighting that pulley and I just need to get this over those wheels there and it will lock into place. Boom, and I'm in. So yeah, it definitely takes a lot of muscle to do it. Uh, you have to pin it against your body to do it, um, but you won't you won't break it in the process. Um, it's again, it's, it's really really rugged uh, and well made. But I think it's good to take that apart just to show you that it can be taken apart, uh, and you don't have to be afraid. You will be able to get it back on, but it just does take uh, a little bit of effort. So cool. Now that's back on, I'll replace. This little stop. You want to get that little hang so it's right over the edge of that rail and then 
and then basically now you can tighten that screw uh, back down to secure this little stop in place. Okay, and then basically to reset it and lock it, I'm gonna pull the track back down. I'm gonna push it into this position here. Boom, it's got it, safety on. All right, and we're back, back to where we started. So now that I showed you the basic operations uh, of the backpack, what I wanna do is get some weight on it uh, so I can basically show you how the locking mechanism will work uh, while you're standing, as well as uh, how we can adjust the spring tension to accommodate uh, the weight we have. So uh, I have a lot of items that I wanna try to, just to fit in this bag later to load it up as much as I can, but uh, just to keep things simple right now, I'm gonna use a little water bladder that I have, a uh, little tablet PC, uh, car battery jumper and then my GoPro and then I'll go ahead and add a five pound kettlebell to it as well. Okay, so now that I loaded the contents uh, in the backpack that I was showing you earlier, uh, basically there's a couple things uh, I wanna show you uh, about the backpack. So right now it's in a locked position and so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna show you how to set the spring um, the bungee core tension for this so that it rides correctly and so Right now you can't tell uh, kind of what the tension is, uh, but what's going to happen is I'm going to unlock uh, the system right here. And this is something that I, uh, I recommend that you do um, with the backpack off so you can set the tension in a much easier manner. So basically we're going to take the safety out and then basically we're going to push down and that unlocked it. And so look what happens when I hold by the straps here. So when I'm holding by the straps, uh, the pack is basically dropping down. So that tells me uh, there's not enough spring tension here uh, in this system. And so uh, what we're gonna do is we're gonna set it uh, on the other side here with this uh, lever. And basically we're gonna pump up to tighten it and then we're gonna pump down to loosen it. Uh, and so basically uh, you don't wanna be at either extreme. You want the backpack to kind of be in the middle here when you're moving around. And so what we're gonna do is we're gonna set the spring uh, to bring this backpack up to about this position here. Uh, and I highly recommend that you do it with it off because if you try to do it with it on, your hand's gonna get a little bit of a cramp trying to do that. Uh, and so what we're gonna do, we're gonna set it down. And then basically the pump to increase the tension, we're gonna start uh, from this horizontal position and we're just gonna push upward and we're gonna pump. Okay, I think that's a good spot to be in. So sometimes when you have the tension uh, higher, the end of the bungee cord um, will come out here. Now there's a little channel that this uh, bungee cord can go into uh, and you can just tuck it in there, but the end of it will kind of uh, ride down into the rest of the um, assembly down there. And sometimes it may uh, interfere a little bit uh, with the pulley system. Uh, and so for me, like one thing I decided to do is I just tucked it here when I had more tension uh, and it was fine for the most part. I didn't really notice it against my back there because of all the, the padding. Okay, so one thing about this is you don't want to try to put this backpack on uh, when it's unlocked because watch what happens. It's moving around uh, and so it can be really awkward and sometimes it'll set your balance off because it's jumping up and down. So, uh, especially when you got something heavier. So they kind of recommend uh, that you put it in a locked position and we'll go ahead and put it on. And there we have it. So I'm going to go ahead and strap this in. Okay, so that's the chest harness. We got the hip harness. So I'm going to tighten these guys down so it's nice and snug. Uh, and then they got a couple straps uh, right here uh, to help you basically pull it a little closer to your back. So I already said that earlier, so it's nice and snug. And so basically, now I'm going to show you uh, how to unlock it once it's on. And so basically, what we'll do is we'll take the safety off on the side here. And so really all it takes to get this thing moving is you can just jump up and down or you can start running. I'm just gonna pop and boom, uh, it's open. So what I'm gonna do now uh, is I'm just gonna show you uh, what it looks like with me uh, walking uh, with it on and then I'll do a couple runs so you can kind of see what it looks like. Now I'm gonna try with uh, running. Okay, so I think my tension could be a little bit better. So I'm gonna go ahead and readjust it a little bit. I'm gonna, okay, I'm gonna see how that feels. 
we're going to do some tests now. Uh, I'm going to take it on some uh, hikes and a run and uh, put the to work so you can see uh, what's going on with it. I've been working recently with a uh, company called uh, Plantiga, and so basically they make these uh, foot uh, insoles. Uh, and basically, what happens is I can put this little uh, brick that they've created uh, into this custom uh, insole here, and I can put this in my in my shoe. Uh, and what this device does is it will measure um, uh, accelerations. Uh, if you really want to measure kind of like ground reaction forces, uh, you need a force plate and uh, some cameras to be able to do that well. Uh, but at least this will give me some information. What I'm going to do is with some of these uh, tests, these hikes and runs I'm going to go on, uh, I'm going to go ahead and slip this uh, in there. I'm going to measure that data and I'm also going to present it back to you so you can see uh, kind of roughly uh, how, how the load is being handled in my feet with uh, the Plantiga and uh, with, this, with this pack. So for all my running and hiking tests in this section, I loaded 15.4 pounds into this suspended backpack, which consisted of things that you might take on a day hike as you see in this picture. The backpack itself weighs about 7.2 pounds, so in total I'm carrying a net 23.6 pounds. Okay, so we're out here, I got the backpack loaded, I got the Plantiga on, and so I'm going to run one mile with the pack locked, and I'm going to run one mile with the pack unlocked. So here we go. Here we go, another four with the back unlocked. Okay, there you have it. So that's another four laps uh, with the unlocked this time. Yeah, I will say compared to the lock state, it definitely feels less jarring uh, at the knees. I think I, I, I felt like it was straining a little bit more uh, towards the end of the first run, uh, but I felt like uh, it stayed more consistent, a lower level uh, of activation in the quadriceps by the knee. Of course, uh, we'll look at the data and we'll see what it tells us. I was wondering if I might see some change in my G-force data in the lower extremity with the pack gliding compared to locked. So here are the data for my two one-mile runs. With the pack unlocked, my speed was 0.5 meters per second or 1.2 miles per hour slower, but my cadence was a hair faster, but with a shorter stride. Both of these metrics should be associated with a lesser ground reaction force based on what we know about running. The accelerometers on the Plantiga were indicating that I was experiencing more G-forces in the lower extremity with the hover glide gliding. I was extremely curious what the extra Gs were a result of and in what plane and moment during my running motion I was experiencing them. So I ran additional tests on the field in the following days, as well as getting on a treadmill to do a test under constant velocity. No matter what, I kept seeing increased G-forces with the pack and gliding mode, with decreased speeds, increased cadence, and shorter strides, whether I normalized the data based on step counts or time. I'm going to spare you the grueling details I went through over a three-week period to get answers and just present you with this nice summary based on what I was able to measure from the accelerometers. It's common for acceleration data at each point in time with triaxial accelerometers to be summarized with a resultant magnitude using this equation. As acceleration can occur in positive and negative directions, this equation ends up rolling all the vectors of acceleration at each moment in time into one value for a more easy analysis. The result is this graph that you see there. When compared to the same run with the bag unlocked, I often could see many small increases in magnitude in the graph, but the composite doesn't tell me what's going on in each plane. Fortunately, I was able to download the raw data in all three planes and plot it out in Excel for analysis. Based on watching videos of my run and looking at the acceleration plots in each axis in detail, I was able to conclude with fairly good confidence that the increase in Gs were occurring in the mid to end stages of my swing phase. I suspect this is partly due to the shortened strides with increased cadence, which require me to accelerate and decelerate more aggressively, but I could be wrong. Okay, on to the hike. So I'm at a local hike here. It's 2.2 miles. I'm going to do this twice with the pack uh, locked and then unlocked, and I'll tell you the difference and how it feels.
Okay, so going up, it's about what you expect with a pack, but it was really comfortable. I like the straps, um, they were secure. I didn't feel like this pack was, uh, you know, rubbing any funny way, uh, you know, on my shoulders or on my hips or back. Um, I did hear a little bit of flexing uh, in the frame, um, but it wasn't, it wasn't too bad. Coming back down with the pack locked, you know, I started to feel a little bit of burning in the, in the quads um, about halfway through and down. Um, and so going up and down with the pack unlocked, um, going, going up, I felt it was about the same, uh, but then I have a perturbation to deal with because the pack is uh, sliding up and down. Uh, and so I don't know if I care for that so much. Uh, I feel like I have to work a little bit harder to stabilize myself when I'm walking. Uh, I think coming down, uh, definitely it was more helpful having the pack unlocked. Um, I think my knees were working, you know, a little less harder. I didn't feel quite as much uh, burn in the quads coming down. Um, but, you know, the trade-off is because there are some perturbations, you know, I felt like my body was kind of, you know, being pushed back and forth slightly. Uh, and also from that motion, I felt like um, that was kind of digging into my upper traps a little bit. And so, um, you know, I had, I was starting to get a little bit sore uh, there towards the end where I didn't feel that with the pack locked. And so, um, you know, I suppose that's a trade-off. Um, knee comfort for a little bit of shoulder discomfort. Um, you know, I think the shoulder is mostly muscular, a little bit more resilient, um, you know, so it can, it can take the beating and uh, pretty easy to treat and recover. You know, the knees, uh, you know, obviously we need those for a long time. So, um, yeah, I, I think, you know, for as far as coming down goes, I think it's definitely, definitely helpful in that aspect. So unfortunately, I did not have cell signal for the hike, so I was unable to use my Plantiga because I need to connect to the internet. There happens to be a nice steep set of stairs next to a trail by my office that I was able to get some data on. While my data showed me that I was utilizing less Gs going up and coming down the stairs compared to the lock state, the nature of the rocky and uneven steps made the acceleration traces too erratic to see any sort of pattern uh, where that reduction might be coming from. However, like the hike, I also felt like the benefit of the bag was greatest in gliding mode walking down the stairs. Okay, so after a month of using the backpack, what are my thoughts on it? Well, at a basic level, I think it's a nice pack. The material quality is good. I like the organizational compartments inside here, and I think it's really comfortable to wear. But of course, uh, at $500, it carries a $300 premium over uh, the most expensive day pack with a similar capacity. Uh, and so you gotta ask yourself, is it worth it? So starting with walking and running, I'll say with walking, I didn't feel a huge difference between uh, the pack locked and unlocked. Uh, but with running, I think I felt that my quads were working a little bit less harder uh, and every step I was taking was a little bit lighter. But of course, you know, how I'm feeling could be different depending on many different things. It could be the distances I was testing, could be the speeds I was running at, could be the tension in the system, the load I was carrying, could even be the way that I was running. Uh, and so for this reason, I think uh, the only way we're gonna get a true picture of uh, how this thing uh, performs is after a lot of people get their hands on it uh, or someone comes out and does a very, very comprehensive test. Without a force plate, it's hard to know for sure what reduction in ground reaction forces I was experiencing with the pack unlocked, but I suspect I was in many instances. While I had accelerometers uh, in my feet measuring my gait and acceleration data, uh, the science of actually getting ground reaction force from that information is still under development and by no means perfect. But from what I was able to glean from that data, uh, I could see that increased cadence and shorter strides are something that would suggest that I was experiencing less ground reaction force with running. Uh, but of course, the acceleration data also uh, was showing me things that would suggest perhaps there's an energetic cost uh, as a result of that. And so, you know, that's where there's a balance that needs to be found and between injury prevention and energetic cost, but that's gonna be different from individual to individual. So there's actually still ongoing research in regards to suspended packs like this. And so a lot of the motivation behind that is military interest. One of the activities they often train with is running with uh, heavy gear in their rucksack. Uh, and so if there's a way they could prevent some injuries, obviously that would be good. From what I skimmed in some of the research papers that were investigating technology like this was that uh, it's still a little bit tricky uh, one of the papers was mentioning they had to try to 
tune the suspension system movement with the speed they wanted to test at. Uh, I also saw you know, in one of the papers, some of the users were complaining about the bouncing up and down of the bag uh, was hard on their traps. But running might be a moot point for civilians like us. Most of us probably aren't thinking about buying a bag like this so we can load it up with tons of weight and go running long distance. Although some may, I think most of us are gonna use this for hiking. And so as I mentioned uh, earlier in my hiking part of the video, I didn't care so much for the perturbations of the bag uh, going up and down as I was going uphill, but I do feel that coming downhill with the bag unlocked, that's where I felt a discernible difference uh, in my quads and knees. And oftentimes uh, I have patients or friends uh, complain about knee pain on the descent of their hike. And so that's where you may find utility with this bag. So if you're someone who likes to go uh, hiking uh, long distance and you want to carry some gear with you, this could certainly be an option. Uh, it could even be an option if you want to do some overnight camping, if you're with a party uh, that has someone that could carry some of the bigger items. Uh, this would at least let you carry uh, some of the smaller items uh, up to 25 pounds. And so uh, that might open that option up to you as well. Um, but that's why I'm more excited about the 55 liter Trekker that's uh, coming out next year. But as this is a growing company, uh, and considering that they're trying to improve human mobility and the fact that we haven't seen a commercial product like this yet on the market, I definitely support them so they can continue to make uh, advancements uh, and new developments where they can. Uh, I purchased my pack and I think I'm going to keep using it for as long as I can. So I'm curious, are you someone that owns this bag or are you someone that does research uh, into bags like this? If so, please comment below. Uh, would love to hear your experience uh, or your insights. I think everybody who's watching this video will find it useful. Uh, if you haven't, please like or subscribe to my channel. Otherwise, thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.